please explain a little bit about your background and how you came to representing your party in the riding of Brantford. We'll start with uh, Phil McCollum. <clears throat> Two minutes? Yeah. Okay, uh, fairly succinctly, I'm a, a native of Brantford, born and raised here, uh, 61 years old. I have a, uh, four adult children and now four wonderful grandchildren. One of my children, my uh, fourth child, is a special needs, intellectually disabled uh, man, 29 years old now, and uh, uh, has made life incredibly enriching uh, for our family. Uh, politics uh, has been something that I was interested in for many years. In fact, when I started Laurier in 1972, I actually was a political science major. I dropped it after first year because I got so excited about psychology and uh, physical education that I went forward on those subjects. But that said, uh, it was kind of in my blood and I led my, the building industry on Ontario. I became a builder, had my own business my whole working life. I was never a member of a political party until 2005. Um, I, I uh, built a business. I was involved in the politics of my industry. I was the, uh, the uh, president of the Ontario Home Builders Association, representing about 3,600 companies in the province who were uh, entrepreneurial home builders across uh, this province. Uh, I sat on the other side of the table, lobbying government uh, in the days of the Bob Ray government. That's the time when I was president of Ontario Home Builders. So I saw the perspective from the other side of the table became very interested one day to perhaps make my contribution. So in 2005, literally I read every political party's platform and decided that the conservative platform was closely aligned to the way my values uh, have come through and my philosophies uh, of, of how I built my business and have uh, handled myself and my family. And so I moved forward from there. I lost an election in 2006 and I won an election in 2008 and 2011. Thanks so much. Uh, I grew up here. Uh, I was born here. I grew up in Eagle Place, and I remember as a kid having um, difficulties. Uh, we didn't have a car. My mother was on social assistance. I, mean, I was on social assistance. It was tough. It was hard scrabble. And over time, you know, it's funny. I actually started off being sort of right wing. Not sort of right wing. I, I voted reform once. Don't tell anybody. Because <laughs> um, I thought, you know. The stuff I heard on the radio, the stuff I, I, I saw in the commercials, and even in the debates, it was all about working hard and all this other piece, but it, it was really about individualism. And, and I, over time, I, I sort of started moving away from that. I went to the University of Ottawa. I was lucky enough to be able to go there. And I remember I joined the, the English Debate Society there. And uh, when you go to the University of Ottawa, you get a lot of visits from politicians. And some of the right wing ones, I, I met Preston Manning. I, I thought he was excellent. I, I really enjoyed him. Uh, Joe Clark, who I got to work with later on Canada Without Poverty, another conservative politician, really enjoyed him. But I started meeting uh, liberals and New Democrats and, and even some Greens. And uh, over time, I started looking more and more into the platforms, kind of like Phil. And I realized that the stuff that I was actually uh, saying, that the solutions that I wanted to see for a lot of the issues that are causing us uh, problems in society were actually New Democrat policies. Right? Brian Topp once said that uh, uh, everybody in Canada is a New Democrat, they just don't know it. And, and I think there's some truth to that. Because it's what we hear uh, around the kitchen table, it's what we hear or see in a meme online uh, that we think New Democrats are sometimes. When you actually look at the policy, you actually look at what they've been able to accomplish inside and outside of government, it's quite impressive. Uh, then uh, I was working for student media and I met Jack Layton. Uh, it was uh, just after he became leader. And I always remember he came in and he, had, he carried his own bags. He had an assistant with him, a student. He carried his own bags uh, and spent more time with me and some of the other people in the student media uh, than he did folks uh, in the actual media who were there, CTV and Global News. And I always thought that was interesting. And I was a jerk to Jack Layton the first time I met him. I was, you know, you're the leader of uh, one of the distant parties. How can you accomplish anything? What can you hope to achieve? Right? Uh, doing one of those with him. And uh, it was funny, though, because he answered all my questions. And I, I kept reading more and more into it. And, and, and I realized this is actually where I stand. I'm a new Democrat. So that's how I, I came to become a new Democrat. And I'm, All right, I've been uh, there ever since. Last two minutes, sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, next is uh, Daniel Tigas. How do we get more people like you and the youth involved in politics? And it's one of those questions that um, I don't think there is a definite answer for. I think if that's the path you see yourself going on, you know that it's there for you and it's part internal too, that you want to serve and you want to um, volunteer and give of yourself. Um, when I put my name forward for the nomination, a lot of people 
came, including Phil Gillies and Mark, saying it wasn't a surprise that, that I was doing this, um, just knowing me throughout my time here in town and what I'm involved in. And one of the biggest influences on my life was Jane Stewart. And I was dancing at the Hungarian Hall, and somebody walked in and everybody wanted to shake this person's hand. They wanted a photo with them, and they wanted their two minutes. And I said, who is that? Because I had never seen a woman being responded to that way before. And it was Jane Stewart. So I went up to her and I said, what exactly is your story and what do you do and how can I be you? Because everybody values what you have to say. And she said, well, get involved. So I got involved in the local association. I was president of the Brant Young Liberals for a couple years. Then I went on to become the president of the Brant Women in Liberal Power um, group. And I am a, a lobbyist, and its job is very much like a member of parliament or provincial parliament. We help with bills and legislation. I've worked at Queen's Park. I've worked on Parliament <coughs> Hill. And when this nomination came over, I knew the previous in, uh, candidate was no longer seeking it. So I, nobody's ever going to ask you to dance. So you get out there and dance for yourself. And that's what I did. And I'm lucky to have the nomination and have this great experience. All right, well, I'm not from Brantford. I'm born and raised in Toronto. I moved here uh, almost five years ago now because of a girl. <laughs> it didn't work out, but I'm here because I fell in love with the town. I, um, especially the week after I moved here, I joined the city of Brantford's Environmental Policy Advisory Committee. At my very first meeting, I was elected chair of that group, and I served as chair for two years. I'm also the vice president of the Grand River Environmental Group. We meet once a month, and we just pick up garbage around town in public spaces. Uh, I studied political science and French at school at York University, and I'm here now. I, I, I came to the Greens because of Bill C-51, actually. It was Stephen Harper's Anti-Terrorism Act. Uh, I, I'm a politics nerd, and I watched Collective Period, I watched Parliament, and I saw that Elizabeth May was the first parliamentarian to stand up against Bill C-51, and that impressed me greatly. I, I, always, I voted Green the past couple of elections, and I kind of had a general idea of what they stood for, but after seeing Elizabeth May, I really delved deeper into the Green Party policy and platform. And I was reading it, and I realized just how realistic, how pragmatic, and how not worthy of French status it really is. So I joined the party, and I reached out to the local um, electoral district association, the EDA, and I asked them, who's the candidate? Because I knew it was election year. And they said, nobody. So I threw my name into the hat, nobody else did. So I was acclaimed as the candidate. And here I am now. <laughs>